he tried to explain to me what this movie was. I had no idea what he was talking about. And then I just went on with my life and people said, what did you think? I said, I don't know what he's talking about. I like, he seems like a nice guy, but I don't know what he means. Michael, hello. Hi. And thank you for coming and chatting all things Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Thanks for having me. Can I just say, wow. 36 years since the first one. Right. And I think there's such an amazing like reprisal. You have done incredible with this character. Why has it been so long and how did you feel bringing this character back? Well, it felt great bringing it back. That's that. Mm -hmm. And why it took so long? Well, you know, we've been busy, Tim and I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we're doing a lot of other things. And it's not the kind of movie that's, well, all sequels are hard to make. I, I mean, to make well, you know. And this one is particularly hard, I think, because it's unique. There's nothing like it. So to do it twice, you know, is a, is a, a big lift. And in this film, I think the fans are going to love the fact that you refer to yourself as the juice. Right. It came out perfectly. Yeah. It, like everyone was laughing and was like, yes. Yeah. Was speaks, that you? Speaks about himself in the third person. Yes. Yeah. Was that you improvising or was that something that was written in? Because I know you do a lot of improv. We do a lot of improv. I'm trying to think. I don't think that was actually. I mean, it might have been. It might have been a case of Tim saying, you know, okay, here's what happens here. We need, like, you know, we need something when you make your appearance there, I can't remember. They may, there may have been a few things and he and I tried different versions. Are there any like hidden little Easter eggs in this movie where you literally just went off, off of script and everyone was like, keep the cameras rolling. This is just brilliant. You know, interestingly, yes, of course, always, but not as much in this one as the first, because you have to understand, Tim and I were figuring a lot of the stuff out. I mean, he, he had the world. He created the entire Beetlejuice thing in his mind. And when he started talking to me about it, we just started pitching ideas to each other, and then we were on set inventing things. This time, he was ultra prepared. He hit, was very clear in his head about what the sets were gonna be, what the scenes were gonna be, what was going to happen. And it was, we still improvise and I still bring my ideas, but not as much this time because I just showed up and said, oh, this is great. I got it. Yeah, I see what you want me to do. I'll just go do exactly that. But inside that, there's always room to improvise. Yeah. Actually, if you can, cast your mind back to the very first moment that you actually met Tim. Because you two working together, it literally is just pure magic. Yeah. What, what was it that drew you to him? Well, I was, someone said there's this guy, he's got this film out that's getting a little attention. It was very, I don't think it was a, a short, I think it was uh, Frankenweenie, I think. And they said, they think, you know, people think this guy is going to be something that's very creative. I said, do you, and they said, he wants to meet you about something. He said, sure, you know, I'll, I'll have a meeting with him. I think he had probably met other actors. I'm not sure, really. Um, and I said, sure, well, I'll go meet him. And I have this meeting and we talked and he tried to explain to me, explain to me uh, what be this movie was. I had no idea what he was talking about. Zero. I said, okay. I heard him and I said, okay, well, that was nice meeting you. And then I just went on with my life and people said, what did you think? I said, I don't know what he's talking about. I like, he seems like a nice guy, but I don't know what he means. <laughs> and then I just went on with my life. And then someone said, hey, you know, maybe you should talk to him again. And I said, okay, but I still, and I met him and same thing. I have no idea. And then he said a couple of things and I thought, I like this guy. I have a feeling he's something. I don't know what it is yet. So I said, give me a minute, let me go home, and think this over. And then I just started to think, okay, maybe I'll give this a shot. This is when I thought, it, what the hell, just go nuts. And I started to create this thing. Well, it works. You two yeah. together is just the best. Yeah, yeah. Um, and finally, um, it's just a little bit of tongue in cheek, a little bit of fun that we have. Um, it's asking the questions that you want people to stop asking you. Yeah. What is the one question that Michael Keaton wants people to stop asking him? Um, please stop asking me if I can come over to your house and cook you dinner because I'm a really good cook. So, so I, I just don't, I would do it. I would do it. I just don't have the time. Ah, oh, well, that was my next question. Can you come cook for me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Congratulations on such a Thanks. brilliant film. You're amazing. Thanks. Thank this you. is hard.